Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today I want to talk to you about Lightwrap. Now, Lightwrap is a simulation of a real world effect where the coloured light of the environment wraps itself around the edges of foreground objects. And if you've ever worked with green screen, this will be a familiar phenomenon to you. The green of the background very annoyingly wraps itself around the edges of your foreground subject, making them glow green and you have to despill the foreground to remove it. But it's a phenomenon that we can in fact use to our advantage to make better, more realistic looking composites. So let's take a look at building our very own light wrap right here in motion. So for this project, I'm going with 1920, 1080. The frame rate and duration don't actually matter because we're not doing any animation for this. So the first thing I want to do is import these two assets. I'll give you a link to them. Bring those two in. I want to put the window above the lake image. And with the window selected, let's come to 3G object controls. Let's switch to custom and let's just scale it up. So, well, it's reasonably big like that. So well, that's kind of 285 or something. And let's just click on Real Vit Reveal Environment Lighting and just turn that lighting down to about 10%. So let's add a camera, I think. Might as well. Switch to 3D. Now, in the real world, we'd have a light coming through from the sky above the mountains here. So let's add in a light there. Add in a light. We want to make sure that the lake image is not illuminated. In actual fact, let's bring the lake image out into its own group and put that group at the back there. Let's come to the lighting for that group and turn it off. So then let's take our light and let's move it. Well, let's first of all move it over a bit on X like that and then back on Z and then up on Y and then let's set its fall off to zero and let's just increase its intensity till it's starting to light up the edges of the window like that. So this is looking a bit better, but it's still looking a little bit sort of hokey and we can make it a lot better if we add our light wrap. So let's do that. I'm just going to do a quick bit of renaming here first of all. I've called the group with the window in it FG for foreground and the one with the lake in it BG for background. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our lake image and we are going to clone it. So right click make clone layer and we're going to drag it out above our foreground like this. And again, we want to turn off its lighting. So we want to now mask this using the foreground. So let us right click on the clone, add image mask, and then let's use the foreground group as the source for it. And if we just turn off everything else, now this is what we've got. So we actually want to invert this mask. So let's click on the invert mask button and we also want to blur it. So filters, blur, and Gaussian blur. And let's go for something like 64 for the blur. So if I turn back on my foreground, it's looking like this. And I'll turn the background on as well. It's kind of looking all right. What we actually want to do is set the blend mode of this group to screen. And you'll see when I do that, what we're doing is we're actually doubling up on that lake image. And we don't want that. All we want is a little bit of an edge to our lighting effect. So to do that, we need to add another image mask to this clone. So right click, add image mask. Again, let's use the foreground as the source. Turn the foreground back on again. Actually, no, let's not just turn, let's turn it off just temporarily so I can show you exactly what we're, what it's looking like. And with this new mask, we want to set the mask blend mode to subtract and invert. So now we've got just that edge there. And if we turn back on our foreground and our background, it's starting to look a lot better. You can see we're getting this effect of the light wrapping around the edges. And that's a lot more convincing than what we had before. The only problem, of course, is that what we're wrapping is the unmodified lake image. And the result of that is it looks a little bit as though the edges have gone see through. So what we can do to fix that is we can select this clone and we can blur that as well. So add a Gaussian blur to that. And for the amount, again, let's go for something like 64. So you can see we're getting that light effect 
but if I turn that Gaussian blur off, you can see there it started to make the, the edges look see-through, whereas with the blur, it's looking a lot better. So we can adjust that blur to taste. And if we adjust the blur on the image mask, you can see we can increase or decrease the depth of that light wrap effect. So there you go, that is the basic principle, and I want to show you that we can also use it with, for example, text. So I won't waste your time typing in some text, I'm just going to grab it. So I've just dropped this text into the foreground group, and let's just turn off the window, and it's looking like this. So here's the light wrap effect on that. Now, the thing about light wrap is that you really don't want to overcook it because it just looks like you've got glowing edges. But if you just adjust the opacity, this definitely looks better than the hokey look that you get if you just slap 3D text on top of an image like uh, Apple do in their demos and so on. It just looks absolutely horrible. Whereas a bit of light wrap and it's all starting to look slightly less offensive. So I just want to wrap up by running over that process again for you. So what we did was we took our background image and we made a clone of it or a copy of it if you like. You could just duplicate it if you prefer. So let's just turn off our background and foreground and turn off our two masks. So there was our image with the blur on it. Let's turn off the blur as well. So the first thing we did was added an image mask like that, which we blurred. So the effect of that blur is that we're extending the edges softly out from the mask. And then we used another image mask just to isolate those edges rather than have the bit in the middle as well, which we don't want to be adding back in again. And so then we set the blend mode of the group to screen. We can turn back on our foreground and background and this is the effect. And blurring the background image just avoids that impression that the edges have gone see-through. So anyway, I hope that's been useful. Thanks very much indeed for watching, and I'll see you again soon.